on the conjunction, conjunction of luxuries. Extensive support and encouragement must be extended to a small scale and cotton industries. Such supports should include ensuring regular supply of raw materials, such as yarn, dye stuffs, to hand loop weavers at reasonable prices. Marketing and carrying facilities must also be made available to them. A small scale industries must be developed through cooperatives and dispersed through the countryside, reaching into the depths of rural areas, so that desperately needed employment opportunities are extended to our rural masses. Judah suffered from criminal neglect. A discriminatory exchange rate, a parasitic middleman have denied to the jute growers a fair price. Nationalization of the jute trade and musketer emphasis on jute research aimed at improving quantity and yield per acre will enable just jute to make its rightful contribution to our economy. Cotton needs similar attention and therefore we believe that cotton trade should also be nationalized and measures adopted to improve quality and yield. Our major cash crops, tea, sugarcane, tobacco still suffer from appallingly low yields due to neglect of previous governments. In a resource poor country, every effort must be made to ensure a rapid increase in productivity. A fair and stable price to the growers should also be ensured. Indeed, our entire agricultural sector needs to be revolutionized. Jagir Dari, Jamir Dari, Shad Dari systems in West Pakistan must be abolished. The entire land system has to undergo a radical reorientation in the interest of actual tillers of the land. Ceiling must be imposed on land holdings. Land above such ceilings and the government cost land must be redistributed to landless cultivators. Agriculture must be modernized. The obstacle presented by the fragmentation and subdivision of land holdings must be overcome. And immediate steps in the right direction would be to induce the tillers to group their holdings under multi-purpose cooperatives. Government could provide effective inducement for this purpose by funneling through such cooperatives vital impure such as irrigation, embankment, drainage, deep tubers, power pumps, fertilizers, improved seeds, agricultural implements and machinery, credit and inst instruction in modern agriculture techniques. As a measure of immediate relief to our peasants, we are groaning under the burden of land revenue. We should abolish land revenue in respect of holdings up to 25 biggest and right of all areas in respect of such holdings. Ultimately, we aim, we aim to abolish the present system of land revenue. These vital areas, which form part of infrastructure of economy, must be accorded the highest priority. The first is flood control. A comprehensive flood control program must be implemented on an emergency basis. Measures to prevent water logging and salinity in West Pakistan must also be implemented at an accelerated pace. The next vital area is that of power. There must be massive expansion in power generation and distribution. An extensive rural distribution must be launched to take electricity to the villages so as to make it possible for a small scale industry to be established. We aim to attain our power generation capacity we have 2,500 megawatts in Bengal within five years. Every source of power must be harnessed to, max to, maximum, to maximize power generation capacity. The nu Rupur nuclear power project and Jamal Gul coal project must be immediately implemented. Natural gas must also be fully utilized. The third vital area is that of transport and communication. The highest priority is accorded by us to the construction of a bridge over the river Jamuna to enable direct communication to and from North Bengal. Bridges, over, bridges should also be developed over different points on river in Das and Sindh and the Punjab over the Buriganga, Shitalakha 
and Karnafuli. The development of ports, both sea ports and inland river ports, and also roads and railways, must be accorded the highest priority. No investment is as vital for the healthy development of our society than investment in education. It is an alarming fact the number of primary school in Bengal has declined since 1947. Only 80% of our population has attained literacy and the number of illiterates is increasing by over 1 million persons per year. Primary education is denied to more than half of the national children. Only 80% of our boys and 6% of our girls complete the first five years of elementary school. We believe that at least 4% of the gross national product should be committed to education. The salary of the college and the school teachers, and particularly school teachers, must be substantially increased. Illiteracy must be eradicated by adopting of extraordinary methods. A crash program must be launched to extend free compulsory primary education to all children within five years. Second education should be made readily accessible to all sections of our people. New universities, including medical and technical universities, must be rapidly established. Poverty should not be allowed to deprive meritorious boys and girls of the opportunity to pursue higher education. Immediate steps should be taken to ensure that Bengali and Urdu should replace English in all walks of life, where every effort should be made to encourage the development of regional languages. Turning to the problem of the cities, we find low-income groups living in subhuman conditions. The so-called improvement trust have been busy developing luxurious residential areas for the wealthy, while the poor have been left to fend for themselves. Future urban development must concentrate on providing for the needs of the poor majority of the city dwellers. Low-cost urban housing must be accorded the highest priority. In the field of health, even a minimum measure of medical relief is denied to over 90% of our population. Immediate measures should be, should be undertaken to establish a rural medical center in every union and a hospital at every Thana headquarters. National service in the rural areas should be introduced for medical graduates and paramedical personnel must be trained in large number to stop the rural health centers. Industrial workers play as vital a role in the economy as in the people's struggle. Their basic rights to form trade unions, to bargain collectively, and to strike must be granted. A living wage and the basic amenities, such as housing, education, medical care for themselves, and their children must be assured. All labor laws which restrict the basic rights of workers must be repealed. They can be expected to make their full contribution toward increasing industrial productivity. Productivity in all sections of the economy must be increased to make to the maximum extent possible if we are to meet the needs of our society. The way the structure throughout the economy must be altered in keeping with the dictates of justice. Price stabilization measure must be adopted to protect the real wages of the workers and low paid employees against spurring inflation. We firmly believe in the quality of all citizens. The members of the minority community should know that we have always stood against every form of communalism. They shall enjoy equal rights with all other citizens and shall enjoy equal protection of the laws. Every effort must be made to develop our tribal areas so that these areas can be fully integrated with other areas and the tribal people are able to enjoy equal opportunities with other citizens in all walks of life. Our brothers in the Chittagong Hill Tracks, in the offshore islands and the coastal areas require special assist assistance to develop their latent resources in order to enable them to play the rightful part in our national life. Mohazis should be integrated into a national life so that they may become 
assimilated with the local people and thus enjoy equal rights and opportunity to with them in all works of life. I must repudiate once and for all the false propaganda that Islam is endangered by six-point formula or of an economic program. Nothing which promotes justice between region and region and a man and a man can be opposed to Islam. We have affirmed our commitment to the constitutional principle that no law should be enacted or imposed in Pakistan which is repugnant to the injunction of Islam as contained in the Holy Quran and Sunnah. To turn to the important area of foreign policy, we believe it is imperative for us to avoid involvement in global power conflicts. We must therefore pursue truly independent, non-aligned foreign policy. We are committed to the immediate withdrawal from Seattle, Centro, on all other military impacts and to avoid any such involvement in the future. We support the struggle of our of the oppressed people of the world against imperialism, colonialism, and apartheid, in a keeping with the principle friendship for all and malice towards none. We believe in peaceful coexistence with all states, in particular our neighbors. We believe that normalization of our relations with our neighbors would be the best advantage of our people. We therefore attach the highest importance to the settlement of our outstanding disputes. We have emphasized the importance of a just settlement of the Kashmir dispute in accordance with the United Nations resolutions. The threat of grave and permanent damage of the economy of Bengal posed by the completion of the Farah Kabras must be immediately met. Every effort must be made for the just solution of this problem without further delay. But this program and policies can only be implemented if power is owned by the people. Election will serve as a referendum on the basis of national issues, particularly that of autonomy, on the basis of six-point formula. The elected representatives of the people alone can give to this country a constitution which will be durable basis for living together. It is for this reason, for this reason that we have repeatedly pointed out the restrictions sought to be imposed on the constitution-making powers of the elected representatives of the people are not legitimate. We would once again ask upon the president to repeal the restrictive provisions of the legal framework order. It also helped to create conditions congenial for restoration of democracy if all pending, pending cases, orange against the political workers, his students and laborers arise out of the political activities and of the last year's mass of serves are withdrawn. All sentences imposed in such cases are commuted. All political prisoners detained without trial should also be released. It is imperative for the security of the nation that armed forces should not have to carry the burden of civil administration or to have to involve itself in politics. These highly trained professionals should be left free to devote themselves exclusively to the vital task of defending the nation's frontiers. I would like to end by saying that as a nation we must prove equal to the challenge that faces us. A real living democracy must be established. The different people who make up Pakistan can only live together with a democratic framework. Any attempt to destroy democracy would in the process destroy Pakistan. Justice between region and region must be ensured by granting full regional autonomy to the federating units on the basis of our six-point formula. Within such a federal democratic framework, radical economic programs must be implemented to bring about a social revolution. The Army League has resolved to face this great challenge. We believe that with the support and confidence of the people which our party enjoys, we shall, inshallah, be able to successfully to meet the challenge. Pakistan, Jindabad.